Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented instructor-led face-to-face true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Yeah, it's recording now. Thanks so much. Where are my images? Mm. Web services. Double STL elements interaction. See, only only thing that we are supposed to know is how the elements are communicated respect to the WSTL file. Once after we are aware of how the communication happens between the elements, like how the service and the port will be related to the binding and then to port type and operation, how it will be going to contain the input and output operation. And in cases like fault operation, wherein we want to send some error messages. So operation can contain different types of messages and at the same time, messages can contain different data types. So whenever we are going to write the Java class, you should get a picture in your mind related to the WSTL first. So once after you have designed your WSTL or if you are going for a top-down approach, once you have created your service, once you have created your service, let us say this method, this addition method throws some exception. So let us say someone is sending the data in terms of uh, string values. For that purpose, I have created one more web service. See, this operation I just created with add, which access to strings instead of integers. So once after receiving the data, I'm just converting it to an integer. And after that, I'm adding those two numbers. And finally, I'm returning the data also as a string. So I'm just giving the flexibility to the user or to the client, not only accessing only integers, here it can accept floating points, double values, and it can also accept booleans, characters, and normal string values. But as a client, when he is expecting only the addition of two numbers or two floating point numbers, he was not supposed to send the data in terms of a character because when you are performing the addition operation you can perform the addition operation only between numeric data types of course you can perform the new the concatenation operation between two strings but uh, we are not bothered about that right now so whenever you are converting integer dot parse in and if you pass as a string then it will be definitely going to fail with number format exception so in that case you can specify, you can write it as throws some kind of exception, or you can handle that exception and you can respond back to the client. But remember, the communication between client and server will be going to happen only based on SOAP protocol. So whenever you have sent a request, the normal request also, it will be going to wrap up by your SOAP. That's what we have seen yesterday. And during the request or response at any phase. So even, even for the response which contains an error information, let us say user has some user has sent some string some string representation and our integer dot method has thrown a number format exception. 
So at this point of time, your SOAP will be going to constructed with a fault message. The fault will also be part of the body. Previously, body contains your actual response information, but this time your body contains sorry. This time your body contains fault information, and the client was supposed to handle that particular error, and he needs to he needs to get or he needs to retrieve the error message and the error code. So whenever an exception has occurred. There is our diagram. So, see, whenever an error has occurred, instead of you sending the actual response inside the body, you'll just respond with a fault. The fault block will be going to contain a fault code or fault string or detail. The fault code is nothing but your error code, which you and your client has decided. So based on that error code, client can understand like this is a client error or this is a server error or there is an issue with respect to the header. So based on the fault code, the client can easily understand the issue and he can fix it and he'll be going to trigger the request one more time. The fault string, it will be going to contain some extra information like by looking at the normal message instead of error code. If you can take a look at the error message also, he'll be able to understand in more detail. So today we'll be going to see how to generate a fault message with respect to the server and in the same way how to handle the fault response or the SOAP fault response with respect to the client. And once after that, we'll take a look at one real world example. We'll just take a example from we'll take an example from some UDDA registries. Sigda, just like Sigda. So here we'll take a look at some temperature conversions, which will be going to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Or else, let us go for this one first, and we'll start with the fault rate. See, what I have done is uh, I just went to this website yesterday. I have suggested right webservices.sigda.com. It's like a UDDA registry, and currently we want to do a small example. So we have searched for temperature or else I will start from the scratch. So in the text box, in the search box, I searched for temperature. It has listed with all the available services with respect to our temperature. And uh, I have selected this one, temperature conversion. So this is the WSTL which was available. Remember, your WSTL contains the endpoint information as well as how the request and response communication should happen and also the transport protocol. So once after that, just take the WSTL file. Take the WSTL file and place it in some location. If my voice was not clear, just let me know. I will join using normal audio conference. So this is the WSTL, just to store it at uh, some location. dot WSTL file. Save. Now create a small project wherein we just want to make use of the WSTL and create a client by using Apache CXS. Dynamic web project. Convert temperature client. So 
So once after that, uh, we just need to import the WSTL file at some location. So currently, I'll just drag and drop. Very or temperature dot WSTL file. What is the error? Instruction target matching XML is not allowed. Yeah, we can place it anywhere we have the option uh, the CXF has the option of generating the client at any place so yeah now there is no error just right click on the WSTL file okay, this time what we are doing we are not at all using our local server I didn't do anything it was fixed automatically See, current, yesterday what we have tried, we have created a additions or arithmetic service. That means we have provided a service. We have written a service and after that we have written one client as well. So we in the sense, the service was deployed onto our local host only. And your client also accessing from the same location and that's why we didn't go for UDDI because you didn't re register your service at the UDDI layer. We don't want any of other clients to come and take a look at our arithmetic operation service. But today we just want to make it, we just we want to work as a client and we want to use the existing services because we don't want to write the convert temperature code again and the service was already available at the UDDL layer and you have verified the UDDL layer and you just downloaded the WSTL file. So your WSTL file is enough to generate the client code and to identify the endpoint address. Your Apache CXF has the capability of generating the JAXP objects and the required JAXWS classes based on WSTL file. So yesterday we have seen the top-down approach or from Java to WSTL conversion. So there they have used a tool called Java 2 WSTL. Today we'll be going to discuss in deep one by one. The Java 2 WSTL tool is used to convert your Java application to actual web service. Of course, it will be going to generate a WSTL as well. And in the reverse way, the WSTL to Java. So this was also available with respect to your Apache CXF. So if you just provide the WSTL file, your Apache CXF will be going to generate the JAXP classes and the required JAXWS classes. The JAXWS classes, nothing but your service or your port and the implementation class and, and also it will be going to generate a client or server code if you need so let us go and verify your Apache CXF folder first did anyone verify what are all the folders or files available in Apache CXF.
go to lib your lib contains all the required jar files and you can see that jaxp api jaxp impl double wstl related stuff xml beans which is used for converting your uh, wstl file into jaxp code you need the xml beans anyway jar files are mandatory and here you can see that lot of bad files nothing but your windows batch file so here you can see that wstl to java so you your wstl to java your wstl to java which will be going to convert your wstl the web service description language into java objects and in the same way java to w so these two commands are used by your apache cxf and if you take a look at during the object generation here it will be going to use that particular command and will be going to generate all the required class files currently we are making use of the external wstl file just right click on the wstl file and go to web services and we want only client generate client you can see the test with web service explorer which means first at the first time we have verified one web service explorer window so that that is that is the same and the next one is generate java bean skeleton so just like your server code and after that generate client so currently we are interested only in generate client So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class The demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information If you still have more questions please feel free to call us Call us at 770 777 This is a United States number If you're calling from the UK call us at 020 337 One seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.